Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Nate, and welcome back to another weather forecast discussion for February 23rd, 2022. An ice storm outbreak is starting to unfold here across much of the United States, blanketing some people with over an inch of ice, as well as widespread amounts of a quarter to even a half inch of ice possible. We are going to go over all the areas that could be impacted in this video and more, so please be sure to copy the link of the video and share it with places like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, as well as your family and friends, so we can try and get this information out to as many people as possible. And please be sure to like the video by hitting that thumbs up so that we can get this out to more and more people on YouTube. So without further ado, let's go ahead and go into why this all is occurring here. And the way to do that is by looking at our satellite imagery, which gives us an idea as to what the general flow of the environment is. And we can see this big dip in the jet stream right within here. What this basically means is that we got a bit of a low pressure system here that's creating a lot of counterclockwise flow right within here. And then we have a bit of a high pressure system over here, which is creating a lot of clockwise flow over here. So this high pressure system is uh, basically the opposite of a low pressure system. These two don't exactly like each other. And so they're gonna wanna try and divert from each other for the most part. So this high pressure system is going to force this low pressure system to move across the central portions of the United States somewhat like this, and it's gonna go off into portions of Canada. And as long as that high pressure system is over there, that will be the case for other storms that'll move on through as well. So where a lot of that moisture meets up with where that cold air is, we got a lot of freezing rain and sleet as well as thunder snow over into portions of Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, that general area over there near the Mississippi and Ohio River Delta, that is a lot of activity that's starting to move on through. And we're going to take a look at that specifically with the weather models. So here we are with the simulated radar here with the North American model. Of course, the date and time is above me in Eastern. So consider the following with that if you guys can. Here's the first batch that has been moving on through for the majority of the day. Then the model has been a little bit late here in regards to the timings of the system. But you can see how this moves on through from what was the afternoon earlier on today into the evening tonight. That sleet and freezing rain start to diminish in activity and uh, you get a little bit of a break. Maybe some widespread areas of lower accumulations during the time period of overnight tonight into early tomorrow. But then this is when things start to really become interesting. You can see the widespread activity start to uptick and the coverage becomes a lot more widespread. And you can see a lot of these kind of oranges and purples that start to show up here. That's a lot of sleet and freezing rain. And if you're in any of these areas, you need to watch out for the potential of some icy conditions, especially with your morning rush hours here across portions like Dallas, Fort Worth, Oklahoma City, Tulsa, Little Rock areas towards Springfield, Missouri, Paducah, Kentucky, all the way to Evansville, maybe even Lexington, as well as even into portions of Charleston, West Virginia. A lot of activity that's expected to uptick there. And then during the middle of the day of Thursday, you can see that sleet and freezing rain start to really become significant during this time period of central to southern Missouri into northern Arkansas, as well as into eastern Oklahoma and northeastern Texas. That is expected to be the uh, peak of this uh, winter storm, more or less. That'll continue to be the case all the way through until the afternoon hours, and it's expected to continue to linger on as well, as well as some snow on the backside of the system here across portions of the Midwest towards portions of the Great Lakes. That'll continue to linger on through for the overnight hours of Thursday into Friday. And then as we shift overnight, you can see that it starts to shift off into portions of the upper Ohio River Valley in towards portions of the northern mid-Atlantic and the northeast. And this is when things can start to be really concerning. For the state of Pennsylvania and northern Maryland, there's expected to be some significant amounts of ice across portions of the I-99 corridor over there near Altoona and State College. So you guys really need to watch out for that, especially as this is continuing to continue to linger on through all the way into the early morning hours. And it isn't really expected to kind of melt either because, because as this pushes on through, you can see colder temperatures continue to linger on through much of the day into the evening and overnight hours. So below freezing temperatures is possible that icy condition more than likely will continue to stay within some of these areas. Power outages as well as hazardous travel conditions is likely across some of these areas, especially with how mountainous the terrain is over there in towards portions of Pennsylvania. I should know. I live in southern Pennsylvania. We're going to be dealing with all sorts of that activity there. So it's going to be really interesting to see 
as to how bad our conditions could actually be. But for the rest of the state here into portions of northern Maryland, the eastern panhandle of West Virginia, as well as northern Virginia into portions of the Shenandoah Mountains, you guys need to watch out for some significant amounts of freezing rain. So if we take what we know here from the satellite imagery and play it on to our 500 millibar wind shear, which is about six kilometers above ground level, you can see our general flow of the atmosphere right here that we just brought out to you. You have a dip in the jet stream right here indicating our low pressure system. We have our high pressure system here creating a lot of clockwise flow as well. And so this is expected to continue to play out. This low pressure system is our second batch of winter weather that's going to move on through our first batch is over here our second batch is next to where the low pressure system is and you can see how as this plays on through from tonight into tomorrow with thursday wind shear is expected to amplify and that's the reason why areas over towards the eastern half of the united states specifically the northeastern half of the united states gets as much winter weather as they do from friday into saturday so let's put out the totals here for freezing rain and snow you can see here labeled in all this pink you have uh, quite an absorbent amount of impacts here from the freezing rain department some uh, leftover heavy amounts of freezing rain as possible if we went back a couple of scans we'd probably see more freezing rain from the event that occurred today so the additional amounts of freezing rain that is possible could be in upwards of an inch to maybe an inch and a half in some localized areas of southern Missouri in towards portions of northern Arkansas and extreme northwestern portions of Tennessee you guys could still see a lot of activity in that area and then if we shift over towards the snow totals you guys don't really see a whole lot Rockies still sees quite a bit so if you live over in the Rockies you guys are still going to see an abundance of snow that's in your general area if we shift over to the Ohio Valley for the most part you can see that a lot of that freezing rain is possible across portions from Cleveland all the way down to Dayton and even Columbus even portions of Pittsburgh and Wheeling get into the activity as well as well as uh, you can see as we shift over further and further east much of Pennsylvania Virginia Maryland and West Virginia they could get some activity as well but there is a little bit of a hole here a little bit of a gap if you're right along the Ohio River from portions of Indiana Kentucky all the way through into Ohio and West Virginia maybe not a whole lot of freezing rain but if you're in like central portions of Kentucky and West Virginia you guys could get some activity there as well and then of course snowfall totals here you can see localized along Lake Michigan there is quite a bit of snow here one to three inches is possible from this little snowstorm a lot of warm air is pushing off further and further towards the north it's not exactly cold enough for these areas to get more and more snow so this is a relatively good example of what could be actually happening a little bit later on. Some dusting across much of these other areas here in dark gray, but areas in the blue here, you guys could potentially get one to three inches of snow, which does include portions like Detroit, like Chicago, Windsor, up into portions of Toronto, and uh, further on through towards Buffalo as well. And speaking of areas near Buffalo and further off towards the north and east, here is the freezing rain potentials for some of these areas across portions of the mid-atlantic into the northeast and you can see this big corridor right here near interstate 99 near altoona johnstown in that general vicinity of uh, pennsylvania near breezewood you guys can get about a half inch of freezing rain to even higher than that and upwards of about an inch to an inch and a half of freezing rain possible significant icing especially along the turnpike areas over there from pittsburgh and further off towards breezewood if you're along that general area, you probably should watch out for some significant ice, some very hazardous travel across that area. And uh, even further off down to the south, towards the Delmarva Peninsula, or at least northern portions of Delmarva into Philly, Baltimore, Washington, the I-95 corridor extending from Washington all the way up towards New York City, and even further on to Connecticut and Rhode Island, you guys are going to get quite a bit of freezing rain possible with this system here. And you guys definitely need to watch out for it. Some sleeper areas could be areas over here near south mountain as well as a further down towards portions of the shenandoah mountains uh further on through and towards portions of the eastern panhandle and uh just basically any area over here in northern virginia you guys could get a lot of freezing rain now as for the snow totals well we don't exactly see a whole lot of it unless if you're in the extreme higher elevations of pennsylvania and west virginia uh, but further off to the north you can see how the snow starts to uptick in actual activity, especially as you get into upstate New York, as well as into areas near Lake Ontario, areas along the St. Lawrence River, as well as Vermont, New Hampshire, and even portions of Boston. You guys could potentially get five to eight inches of snow possible across those areas. And then especially further on through and towards portions of coastal Maine, heading off and towards the New Brunswick 
and the Nova Scotia areas could potentially get five to eight inches of snow the closer you are towards the coast. So definitely something to watch out for if you guys live in those general areas. So now that we just talked about the event here from now all the way until Friday, let's try and figure out what happens afterwards. And to do that, we're gonna try and get a general idea as to what the overall pattern is that extends outside of North America, all right? So we're looking further off into the Pacific, further off into the Atlantic, and uh, we can see a couple things here. First off, uh, whenever you see this massive dip in the jet stream, all right, that is a trough that moves on through. That's where a low pressure system resides. And so that is where stormy weather is active. But the opposite to that is when you see the kind of backwards loop, an upside down loop here. This is called a ridge. That's what we were talking about with a high pressure system down here towards portions of Florida and the Gulf of Mexico. And we see that over here towards portions of Alaska as well. And just off of the coast of the northwestern United States in the Pacific Northwest. And uh, as we uh, play this on through here, you can see how that high pressure system in the Pacific Northwest does move off in towards portions of the central United States. And because of that, we are expected to see a big low pressure system that could move on through and create a lot of precipitation across portions of Vancouver Island into the Pacific Northwest. A lot of precipitation here towards the end of February and in towards the beginning of March. So if you guys live over there, you guys definitely need to watch out for that activity there. A lot of precipitation I am anticipating there in the near future. On the other hand, uh, you can see how the high pressure system that's over in Florida is also going to start to recede further and further south. And what that is going to do is that is just basically going to allow low pressure systems to kind of scream across the central portions of the United States and not cut through it, not actually dip up and then shift off towards the north and east. So what's going to happen there is instead of us getting a lot of active weather that we've been getting over the past week and a half, we're going to be getting the same pattern that we had prior to that. We're going to get a bunch of clippers that move on through. So you see a low pressure system that moves off towards portions of northern Ontario and northern Quebec near the Hudson Bay. That's going to create a lot of regional snow for areas over there, as well as the Great Lakes into the northeast. And then we're going to see another system that moves on through here, another clipper that's going to push on through, and that's going to continue to push about. And then we're also going to see this low pressure system down here, a little bit of a weak low pressure system. You can barely tell, but there is a little bit of a dip in the jet stream right within here. Potentially some uh, severe weather that is possible across portions of northern Florida in towards central Florida, maybe even portions of southern Georgia, southern Alabama as well. Somewhere within the time period of Sunday into Monday around the 27th, 28th, and 29th. So if you guys live over there, you guys could potentially get some severe weather that could move on through your areas. But otherwise, it's going to be pretty calm for the most part. You can see how uh, these low pressure systems are now just kind of skidding across the uh, border of Canada and the United States. And you have this big low pressure system that's still creating this massive atmospheric river that's going to continue to bring a lot of precipitation across some of these areas that have been decimated by flooding before within the past three, four, five months. A lot of flooding issues has been ongoing over there. So it's just uh, one of those things where we're hoping that that clears out and doesn't really impact them uh, for a significant amount of time. But unfortunately, that does seem to be the case here as this continues to move on through. Maybe even another low pressure system that kind of moves on through sometime around March 3rd as well. So something to keep in mind with that. Uh, but on the other hand, if we backtrack here just a little teeny smidge, uh, we're going to go back here to sometime around the 27th and 28th uh, leading up towards the uh, 1st. And what's happening here is you have... A bit of a low pressure system that kind of dips on through, creates a lot of cold air that seeps on into portions of the northeast. You also have a low pressure system that is trying to move on through towards the southern portions of the United States. So if you have a lot of moisture that rides along that coast here, could potentially be a winter event for the northeast as well. I can't really foresee it to be a bit of a nor'easter. Maybe a surface low starts to form off of the coast and moves off toward the north and east, but I can't really say for certain as to what exactly that could potentially be. So if we backtrack here now once again, or at least forward track this now, let's see what happens a little bit later on. Well, uh, now your high pressure system that was off in the Gulf of Mexico is now starting to move a little bit further towards the north now. You can see a little bit of a ridge that develops right within here. And you also see a high pressure system that forms over in towards portions of the Pacific Northwest as well. Well off of the coast, I should say. But because of that, we have low pressure systems that are now forming off the coast. And they're going to dig through the portions of the Rockies here, potentially creating some severe weather for the central portions of the United States sometime around the 7th, 8th, and 9th. So it's going to be something to watch out for, for sure. Uh, but regardless, the uh, pattern from now until the beginning of March is expected to be relatively quiet 
in regards to the winter and severe weather department. So let's play this on through here with our simulated radar from the Euro model. You can see our batch of storms starts to move on through here. Here's the weekend into the beginning of next week. And well, we see a lot of precipitation across the central to southern portions of the United States. Could be some uh, residual rain and then our low pressure system that brings a lot of snow towards portions of the northeast as well the beginning of next week. You can also see our atmospheric river that is starting to create a lot of issues for portions of the Pacific Northwest. A lot of rain, a lot of snow, potentially a lot of flooding over there too. So something to continue to monitor. And that's going to continue to be the case here over and over and over again, all the way to the beginning of March 1st, as well as uh, March 1st being another low pressure system to move on through towards the portions of the upper Midwest into the Great Lakes. Our other low pressure system moves off towards portions of Florida. So potentially some severe weather over there from Monday into Tuesday. And then this will continue to push on through and be relatively quiet until we get to about the uh, March 4th, 5th and 6th general time frames where we have potentially some snow and some freezing rain across portions of Ontario, Quebec, as well as our next low pressure system that's going to dig on through and potentially create some severe weather a few days after that. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, turn on notifications, share this with friends and family and on social media. Also follow me on social media. Link will be in the description down below. Subscribing is free guys. All right. So if you want to become a part of the team here, a part of the community and try and get information out, also try and learn about weather, feel free to do so. This is the channel to do so. And I would love to have you guys here. So I really do appreciate that. Our give it to me straight question of the day is, have you ever seen or heard thunder snow? I have. It was when a snow squall came over through my old house. And it was a really interesting system that moved on through. But it was for a short time period. So not really super big. But I did see thunder snow in my lifetime. And it was pretty cool. What about your guys' experiences? Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. And one last thing. Notice how many subscribers we have, guys. We are so close to 26,300. You guys have allowed us to get up this high, and I really do appreciate your all support. So if you guys would like to be a part of the squad, please be sure to do so. And I will catch you guys in the next video, which will be on Thursday night. Peace out, everyone.